Grant Patterson, affectionately known as Scooter for the trikey rides, is a Paralympic swimmer who's been competing professionally since 2007. And they're away. Patterson perhaps in third. The dual Paralympian has dedicated the last 13 years to a tough training regime whilst maintaining a full-time job. And the hard work has finally paid off with a two-medal victory in Tokyo. Grant was born with a rare form of dwarfism that affects the body's cartilage. He's become a global icon for his inspirational performance in and out of the pool. Grant, congratulations on your success at the Games. Incredible work. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. How much work and time has gone into those medals? It's been 13 years, um, my dream, of one day chasing that elusive Paralympic medal. Um, and obviously 2016, I missed out on Rio. And to come back after five years of hard work, pool and gym and everything else that's involved, um, it's a, a great thing to have. Um, and also to have the, the Paralympic medals around my neck um, in the 150 IM and the 50 breaststroke. It's a great honour, not just for me, but for my coach, my personal trainer and my, my network of my family and friends. Um, it's just awesome. You said that dream had been years in the making. What does it feel like now that you've actually got there? It's all a relief off the shoulders. Um, before I started racing, you know, there's always expectations and, you know, you're going into a race ranked a certain ranking in the world. Um, I, went, I went in ranked third in the IM and second in the breaststroke. But, you know, at a pale of the games, anything can happen. Um, there's always curveball thrown in there with Paralympic sport. Um, but no, it, it was good. It came out well and I, I swam fast um, and I come away for bronze and the silver and I was out of the moon. You mentioned missing out on Rio in 2016. What did that experience teach you about yourself and what did you learn from that that you were able to bring to this Olympics? A lot of resilience. Back then, I remember obviously... The decision came back. I missed out because the first reserve got to go. I was second reserve. And obviously I went to the first reserve when he made it. Um, and then obviously the team left and I didn't go. In my head at that time, I was really hating the world. And I was like, why me? I've worked so hard. You know, it's been eight years in the making, blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, it's not fair. Um, anyway, my parents... Um, played a big role, well, they played a big role my whole life. It's why I'm the independent man I am today. Anyway, back to 2016, um, they pretty much said, if you want to keep swimming, you don't have to pull your head in and focus on what you can control. Stop worrying about the uncontrollable because you're wasting time. So that's when I went back to the drawing board and kept training hard. I also took up uh, gym. I didn't do gym before 2016, um, so that was good. Um, and, yeah, the last five years has been flat stick. You're in quarantine now. What's it like for a professional athlete when you suddenly find yourself in a world where training is removed and all of those hardcore things that are in your everyday life just aren't there suddenly? You start making cra crazy videos on Instagram. <laughs> I'm going crazy in here. Well, I'm an outdoor person as it is, and, you know, I work full-time as well, and to lock me up in a room, yeah, it's not good. So I should have relieved my... Well, I've had a lot to do with a few media requests, um, replying to kids' emails, you know, all their support throughout Tokyo. So I had about 80 messages. It was crazy. Um, and then, obviously, talking to friends and family... Um, I've only watched three movies since I've been here, and today's day six, and the PS4 is still in the bag. So wow. I'm doing all right. I think by the time we get to the weekend and I, I realise there's another week, I might go more crazy. Best that you've not peaked too early, though, by getting out the movies and the PlayStation. No, it's cheaper. Right, we're going up the hill. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? We should have probably saved this interview to, like, your second last day or something because then that could have occupied a oh, bit of time towards the end. We can do another one. <laughs> I've got nothing to do. I'm not going anywhere. We can do a daily one. You just come on every day, no, take up a bit of your time. <laughs> we can do an Anchorman the third. Um, <laughs> your success uh, in the pool and your popularity in Tokyo has really raised your profile. What would you like to do with that? 
I would like to help inspire and motivate all the younger generation out there uh, to get them probably, I know social media helps in a lot of ways, but get them out there and focus on, on their goals and dreams and stop looking at the world going by on a phone. To get to your dreams and goals, you actually have to go out there physically and do stuff. Talk to people, do things, um, and for them to know that if I, someone like me can do what I've done for the past 13 years, um, anyone can do it. Grant, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you. You have a lovely night and good night, Australia. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 7.30's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.